We have a next guest, Dmitry Emelianov. When wrong is right, case of Russian post product transformation. So just a few words about uh, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, I think we had an interesting case in Russian post where we had two different ways of initiation the transformation inside. And one of these is uh, described in agile community as a good way and one way is like unlikely scenario and how actually unlikely scenario worked for us. And I think it's, it should be interesting for you. Uh, I'm not going to stay on the agenda for person who, if you are still thinking, should I stay or should I go to another session, who will be interested in? If you are in the company or working with the company, you are in in the process of any transformation, you're a change agent, maybe management level, and you have a feeling that you faced a wall. You have implemented some changes, and there are a lot of questions that are out of your zone of influence. So this speech would be interesting for you because maybe it will show you a, a different angle at the current situation. And of course, uh, who is curious about <laughs> what kind of product transformation are you talking about? Is post-service come on, and et cetera? I will definitely share some curious facts. Maybe it will be relevant to the Thienian Pochta. I, I'm not quite sure how it works, but I hope that after the speech, you may share some thoughts. Uh, who am I, why I'm talking about Russian Post? Um, I work in Russian Post as an price and job coach. I'm situated in Moscow, Russia. And um, I'm an agile coach who works with organizational level and helps a Russian Post to realize their products and build efficient teams around these products. As I said, I, I've worked in at least eight years with IT teams with different approaches, Scrum, Kanban, Scale frameworks, whatever. And my style of work if, is about uh, finding the necessary effective tools for the business, uh, not um, diving into any specific one. I mean, I don't have any favorite tool, I just uh, listen to the request. And um, this is my third time at Agile Tour Vilnius. Thank you very much for inviting me. My two first speeches was more, more about my personal stories, like an Agile coaches. And now I have, I think, quite a curious uh, case. Um, and I want to share it. First of all, I want to share just a very popular right now meme about agent enterprise agile coach. Uh, I'm not going to commit it somehow, just like, you know, it's a part of reality. Sometimes you become this a little bit, a little frog. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, just first question, uh, what comes in mind when you hear the post service? like any associations, please uh, type in the chat. That would be very interesting. Letters, parcels, yeah, definitely. And else. slow. I don't know uh, if you're talking about uh, specifically <laughs> Russian post, but it's truly 100% about uh, our post service. News coming late. Yeah, relevant. Slow processing. Uh, you have no idea how slow. I will <laughs> tell you about a bit more about Russian post. Bad practice. Mm. Okay, outdated, <laughs> parcels, big lines. Okay, so I suppose that we have something in common with different post services. <laughs> and I want to share, I want to try to share the curious facts about Russian post specifically. 
Uh, I have been to Vilnius numerous times, and I'm sure that's a photo from Vilnius. And I, I unfortunately, I have never been to Kaunas, but um, if I'm right, this is a local site quite popular in Kaunas. <laughs> Why actually I'm comparing Russian ports to uh, cities, <laughs> kind of weird. Um, the problem is amount of employees. So we have more than 330 thousand people, employers of Russian Post. So it's it's even difficult to imagine how big actually this company is. It's bigger than Kaunas. And um, this is not the only one curious fact about Russian Post. Yeah, we are the fourth largest Russian employer. And the key difference for me, uh, it's a closed joint stock company. It means that uh, it is a business in terms of Russian laws. I thought that post service is a governmental structure, like, you know, maybe tax service or maybe utility services. And um, governmental structures are being assessed by different metrics. And Russian post is being assessed like a business with business metrics, return on investment, cost income rate, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, we should keep in mind that POST is a business. And uh, one more curious thing, I don't know if it's equal in Lithuania, according to Russian laws, everyone in Russia, wherever he lives, he or she lives, must have an access to the POST services. In every small village, we must be, it's, it's a law. Um, what, what does it mean for us that we have more than 42,000 um, post offices, local post offices. And we have no right to close any of them. Uh, I don't know how it works in banks, for example. When bank open uh, a front office, it take into account the profitability of this front office. We don't have this right. We just must um, have all this stuff. Um, usually we use this post service like uh, individuals, but actually there are a lot of services to the um, legal entities and not only marketplaces or sellers, it's uh, about all legal entities which communicate via mails and still sometimes mandatory. So we have uh, services for businesses and for individuals. We have big amount of IT solutions, <laughs> despite the fact that people think that we're using pigeons. No, it's about IT solutions. And we have a very different landscape. So it creates a small zoo inside. And we we are working on this right now. And I think it's just curious fact that we have five agile coaches who is working with the company. I don't think that a lot of post services in the world have this. Um, sounds like we are quite stable, quite big, because everything is fine, and we don't need the transformation. The reality is a bit different. There are several key reasons for transformation of this uh, company. First of all, thanks to 2020, a lot of fancy IT companies joined the delivery market, like Yandex. I'm not sure if it's well represented in the CN. It's a very big IT company in Russia, very noticed with lots of products, including the delivery, mail.ru also. You might hear the Sberbank. Yes, it's a bank, but now it works with delivery. And actually, they provide a very nice service of delivery. So the competitive of this market raised. And more classic logistics company like DPD's deck and whatever is uh, situated in Russia, they are quite local, but they go digital too. So the market is very competitive. The second thing is, according to Russian laws, we must receive a lot of mandatory correspondence from tax bills, utility bills, fines, uh, subpoenas, someone's to military, and a lot of different stuff. Uh, maybe thanks 2020 also. But um, our government and government becomes more digital. More services are 
available online and sometimes at some time i think we uh, mandatory to be digital not physical so it is a, a high risk for russian post to lose this quite big amount of uh, market uh, we need new products to reach new markets and real time to market the time we need to launch the products is more than i think two years and it's not like you know two years of developing we can easily spend more than one year in internal agreements and if it's uh, come with uh, if you come up with the idea today it doesn't mean that you will realize it in 2022 this is our reality and of course it doesn't meet the market conditions market requirements we are not competitive here so we need this transformation product transformation to go further uh, that was the time when me and my colleagues joined the company and we started to work with businesses who realizes this wise we started to uh, for work with their requests. The usual request at this time was like, you know, my delivery isn't so good. We deliver something sometimes, but it's not so good. We need, um, we need to focus on this. You as an agile coach or scrum master, whatever, if you worked with team for some time, you know that there are some uh, easy to make decisions that create some results in a short period of time i call long hanging fruits and we we did this we collected this low hanging fruits we received quick results and after that we faced a uh, very difficult even unsolving issues i mean unsolving if we trying to communicate and create a trade-off for example um a digital register mail i'm sorry but a little uh, to the Russian post service. If I send a mail to someone, I can register it. What does it mean? That a person who will receive my mail must sign a notification that, okay, I have received it and I get this notification. So I have a proof that he or she received my mail. And this notification is a, a legal thing. So I can use it and go to the court, for example, and proof with this document that uh, my recipient have received the mail and there is a product who creates these notifications digital like for example push uh, on your phone if you have mobile application for example a very uh, meaningful for us thing but if you are for example a governmental structure and you send fines and you send fines i don't know thousands per day it creates stone of work and it would be nice to uh, develop this function with um, legal entity personal account but inside of us legal entity personal account and digital register mail uh, depends to different businesses and we can just uh, make um, an easy connection or trade-off here and we just could not solve this issue. It wasn't the only one issue we had. There were, I think, dozens. So we have collected all these low hanging fruits. We focused on delivery. It works not fine. It was good. Of course, you have a lot of space for improvement, but to affect real work result, we need more bold changes, you know, and they are in available in the trade-off position and also an interesting case so that we had it's about we may have two different products which are actually the same for example these cases of two deliverers um, for example i'm gonna buy uh, 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 something on aliexpress i don't know case for my iphone very standard thing i receive it to my local post office but I'm lazy, I don't want to go there. I can uh, go to the application and order a courier who will bring me uh, this package for maybe one hour approximately. But uh, if I'll use another button, a postman will bring me today or tomorrow. 
and these two services, these two services are in different business units. And they just can't decide which we should develop further. And it's not very efficient to develop both of them because they are using the same uh, customers, the same problem. And it's, it sounds a bit weird here. And it's also unsolvable in trade-off position. And uh, the one more thing, when you dive into this, into the theme of logistics, um, and I said I had mostly banking experience, logistics is a bit different for me. The deeper you go, the less you understand. For example, uh, there is a, a type of delivery, it's called hyperlocal. Uh, in just words, uh, there is a small area around, I don't know, maybe the cafe, and uh, they use a delivery service to deliver in less than an hour in a small range near this area. It's called hyperlocal. Is it a different product or it's uh, an auction or some bigger product called delivery itself? This is kind of tricky thing. And the, the more I was trying to, me and my colleagues trying to solve this, it became more hard. It looks like definitely like Gordian knot. Maybe you heard about this uh, metaphor, like a very strong knot, which is not uh, impossible to tie up. So we needed some bold activity that cut this Gordian knot. And gladly it happened, we had a top-down communication. On the top, I mean, you know, top CEO of the company shared his ideas and vision about product transformation of WISE and shared it to the other uh, a part of the company. After that, uh, this is exactly the, the phase where I think it's not very good, you know, uh, no, unlikely scenario for product transformation. Unlikely, it may be because uh, the rhetorics could be harsh, maybe somehow it can create a lot of disturbances. We may not go further. Just because it's a top-down communication with this rhetoric. But uh, it helped us. It helped us a lot. It's very difficult to measure this a lot, but um, the, uh, that questions that were raised, uh, that were, they were raised. We started to open discuss uh, the problems inside. We have received more openness from uh, colleagues for our interventions. Uh, for example, the case with um, legal entity personal account and register mail, it was solved on the board level with discussion between these two business units they started to work to develop um, decentralized and we 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 have been available to provide necessary service to our clients uh, the second thing very important thing as any big company you may have products and channels which uh, these products are available like a, port a website uh, mobile application I don't know, call center maybe, and these channels became distributed. So we got, we started to decentralize develop of these channels. That helps really to show our uh, products and new features in the products through these channels. It was a very important thing. And as I said about more openness to intervention, it means like um, we have a lot of departments which are involved in the product uh, transformation. And it's not IT, it's not business, like it's uh, marketing, compliance, system architects, for example, or finances. They become much more open. They, they started even sometimes to help us to do our job in their responsibility. That was uh, that bold action really helped us, but it doesn't solve all issues. 
unfortunately, or, or maybe fortunate, who knows, uh, what was undercover. Uh, discuss of the issues doesn't mean the solution. I shared you two examples. One of uh, one was solved, and the second one, unfortunately, not. So there, there was a, a discussion, several discussions, including board members, but they didn't uh, come to conclusion. And they were expecting the CEO to solve this issue. I think it's not the way how it's supposed to work. So this issue is still open. It's reality. So we still have two different deliveries which are being developed. We have to arrange one more commit. You can <laughs> laugh here. It would be very relevant because five agile coaches in, uh, implemented new commit. But um, we would believe that we created some place where products can discuss about their products. They can show their uh, product discovery process results and ask for no, actually, they ask for money and commit for result. It's not about like project activities when you focus on the what you are going to do. It's about it's more about the result, and it's uh, worth it. The third thing I, I have never seen it in any organization I've ever worked. When we issued uh, formal documents after the inspol action. We came up with these uh, documents to other departments and uh, was showing them the result and asking for help. And they covering <laughs> our document with their document and they said it's more respectable, it's more old, and it was signed by CEO. So your documents doesn't uh, work here. That was very strange and weird even situation, but uh, somewhere we just, we just could. Uh, solve this issue by discussing, by involving into the process, understanding why we're doing for what, but some way it's still a kind of competition. Um, the other thing that happens a bit later, that uh, departments which who were formally helping us, at fact, during for this commit, for example, Tells no, they, uh, tells that they have another opinion, they don't agree, and it created a, a sign of mess uh, in our process. So formally they were helping, we have nothing to tell them, but uh, at fact they are not really supporting. Also, partly it was uh, solved by in involving them in this process, uh, understanding why is and uh, what what's expected from them. I think that perhaps maybe after this bold action, maybe some disturbance was about um, job security, but we will never know for sure. That's my, I just have to think about it maybe. Uh, and very formal defining the scope. This is the thing that we started to do by ourselves. So we, I mean our transformation team, because um, we needed to specify very sharply what do we mean under the product and what is our zone or resp responsibility, sorry. And we needed to do it very formal, including all internal documents, which helps much. And gladly this uh, thing happened. We, we defined this scope. Everyone was agreed with that and it really helps us further. We already have first results. Uh, you may say that, come on, you have so big organization and your results are not significant. Uh, that's true. I agree with this, but I'm proud of, any, of every <laughs> bullet point of this result because uh, I understand the underhood work there. And unfortunately, we're still having internal issues, uh, but not uh, working with external issues. I mean, the market conditions, and etc. So this is our work to teach the company be uh, more effective inside and work more with external, but it is a way. It's a long way, and this is the first steps. 
we already provided 20 delivery uh, product discovery processes. I mean, like, uh, it's, like it's like a design thinking processes in, in general. That was uh, not a shock, definitely, but it was a new action, new solution for the Russian post. And we had a lot of insights and even we had several pivots. I think this is a very good example of how this design process works thing, uh, thing works. For example, we had uh, a payment. Uh, you can provide a payment through the post office. And the um, problems we thought that we had, you know, customers, we were on. And we had to definitely change our mind of uh, developing payments in the post office. We are now forming six product teams and new product boundaries. Uh, product boundaries sometimes can uh, involve two or three business units and uh, five, six, seven syst IT systems inside. So all systems should be ready to be developed from the other side. Um, it should be okay in terms of management and it should be okay in terms of business units. So six is a lot. It's just a lot. And we are forming them because Russian Post isn't the uh, top IT HR brand, as you clearly understand. And we have to uh, hire people which are choosing between, I don't know, Yandex, Sberbank, and Russian Post. So we are not the first of this list, but we are working on this. Uh, and actually, we had one case of cheap delivery of the product. It's untypical product for Russian Post. It's social services. I, I'm afraid I, I don't have a right to tell a bit more, but we uh, we have done this by three IT junior specialists during a half, half a year. It's super cheap and super fast for Russian Post. No one even thought that it's possible. So we just showed them that we it, it is possible to do cheap product experiments for testing hypothesis. And we have some several effective teams back to this um, transformation, uh, trade-off transformation in adjusted boundaries, like I said, you uh, the registered delivery uh, registered mail. And the new wave, what happened next? It's just the very fresh theme is maybe two weeks ago happened. Um, we have completely new organizational structure all of the company, new leaders of new responsibilities. And um, it looks like the whole organizational structure more focused on product delivery, but uh, not underestimating that we have a lot of things beside the products. It's, it would be very uh, incorrect to say that Russian Post is a product company. Of course not. And it will never be. And it's, it's not needed because we have a lot of uh, things that should be developed as a project. So it still happens and still exists. But we focus on products and defining the scope our scope of transformation was really helpful, even in this new reality, because we clearly understand what we are doing and what we're responsible for. And yes, we have expectations. It's not the fact, it's not the reality, it's just ongoing. We have an expectation that we will solve a lot of open issues, uh, maybe without uh, involving the highest management at uh, at horizontal level, you know, like should be it's like it's supposed to work and um, just some memory notes that i my personal memory notes which uh, i've taken from this situation about banking experience yes mostly i had the banking experience bank from bank are not so different yeah they may have right but basically the products are a bit the same and a bit the same way of organizing work and <laughs> it occurs that this is super irrelevant to logistics. It's a very different world. And uh, I'm still in the process of discovering that I work in Russian Post approximately a year, and I still have a lot to know. This is uh, a continuous process. And um, my personal, so 
uh, defining the product boundaries is, is very crucial. And it's very difficult without understanding business context. So it's uh, partly about the first, but this, uh, it, it's more about, you know, um, it's quite not easy maybe, but it's quite clear how to divide, to split the products in the banking. And it's not so easy in uh, logistics, how I uh, told you about the case of hyperlocal delivery. Um, the third thing, the positive thing, you know, uh, there are a lot of people actually which are working in Russian Post and they care about result. It's important for them. And we had an opportunity to work with them during the first uh, lane of transformation, the trade-off transformation. And this is our strong allies here. And th they, they could be very different uh, place in Iraq company, but it's very nice to have strong allies on different layers. Uh, we are bureaucrats <laughs> and it's okay. Uh, just the thing, not, uh, it's not the fine thing we should fight for. It's um, so, uh, sometimes bureaucracy uh, comes from a uh, regulator. Yeah, Russian Post is also regulated. I thought that banks are regulated. No, Post Service is very regulated too. So we have to be bureaucrats, but um, you already, we already have, uh, cases when we can lower this layer of bureaucracy. And with my personal thing about, maybe you might have uh, some stress on the work and defining this strict boundary about what you are doing and what you're responsible for makes you much more calm in your work. So even when all organization, all organization changed in one day. Um, I still understand what I'm going to do. And it helps me to go further just because I understand what I'm doing and what I'm responsible for. And take ways like maybe you can uh, take it with you. Uh, there are no good or bad ways of transformation. Yes, there is a um, a thought in the Java community that it is good when we have a trade-off transformation, you support by your management and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And there is not like this scenario when it's top down. But um, you know, I, I can't even uh, tell why these ideas are at the moment happening. I just uh, it's just like in the air, you know. And I had an, an experience when unlikely scenario provides good results. So I think it should be only suitable uh, suitable tools for any of this. Under, under, never underestimate complexity of the environment. Once again, about logistics, and it's not so easy and. Uh, there is being respectful to the business context is very important when you work with people who are experts in this. Scope of the transformation, okay, at uh, once again, it's really important for me was so it's repeating several times. And the thing that um, was my most recent thought, what would happen if we just collected this all low hanging fruits and we didn't have this bold action? We didn't have this uh, uh, top-down communication. So perhaps maybe for this organization in these conditions and these uh, needs, it would be nice. It would be enough. And we were focusing on collecting low-hanging fruits. You know, I, I was uh, listening to the first keynotes today about running. And I think that uh, that's the case when your client tells that, oh, um, I've ran 10 kilo and I'm fine. I'm happy. I, I did what I've always done. This is something like that. So, um, maybe it's okay. It's for you personally to, to decide as a professional, are you 
do you want to spend time on this or you don't, but this organization, maybe it should be absolutely fine. Um, this is all ideas I wanted to share. Uh, I'm okay. open for your questions and ready to answer. Okay, we, we, we are waiting for questions. Please give the question. We have a little couple minutes for, for answers. We have one question. We received this question uh, at the beginning of your sessions. How can we identify the wrong? What are some good questions to sense it? I also, I also should add my, my opinion. I, I, I understand you're talking about Russian post. I understand when situation is totally wrong, is this good time to, for changes because then not, not so wrong, or maybe it's not necessary because every changes are painful, maybe. Okay, we are back, in, back to the question, how can we identify the wrong? What are the, some good questions to say if? Please, yeah. why you decide, why you choose such name for your presentation? Um, uh, I will start from the answer that, um, you know, we, we, we got used to the idea to assess like there is a good thing or a bad thing. And we've been taught that it's it, it good to be good. It's not good to be bad. And like it's an, an absolute truth, you know, that it could be something bad or good. And when we come up to business with this, I think that uh, uh, we don't need to identify the wrong or good. We will never know until we try. Yeah, we should be accurate. We should understand the context differently. In our context, this works because we already have some results and we had a clear understanding that we we won't be efficient in, in terms of five maybe years or something like that this understanding was existed so i think um how can we identify the appropriate way um if i re reread this question um The key idea, I think, this if you are going to start with bold action, for example, or maybe uh, this is your first touch with the company, it's better to have uh, some achievements already before this bold action. I think this was crucial in our case when we had already some results, but we wanted more, and this worked. And the name of this, because uh, I, as a part of Russian Agile community, was also thinking that this is not a very good way of sense. And when it was happening, I was in a worry. I was really in a worry, and I didn't know how it will affect on the company. But it worked. It worked. <laughs> not 100%, Your... but it helped. Yeah. Okay. Your, your practice, we have evidence that this, in this situation can, could have good results in, in wrong situation. Yes? Yeah. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you for sharing your, uh, your practice.